Hi, everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Very much excited for having you in this on the second day of our uh, executive Q&A session as I assist you and answer some questions for you. Yesterday was great. We got a lot of questions coming in, a lot of uh, challenges and concerns coming in uh, for the discussion. And today we want to continue with the discussion in that case. And I see some of you guys joining. Welcome to the live stream. I want you to comment below in the chat box on uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, on YouTube. YouTube and then in the comment section on Facebook, every question you have, what you want me to share my thoughts on, um, let me know how you would want, what are the areas you want us to focus on uh, for a revision towards the ICA May 2021 exam. So give us a thumbs up on the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel, but most importantly, make sure you share the video and comment below with any questions that you have for me so if you have any questions put them in the chat box as i share my thoughts with you also on how you to revise and pass your exams once this is the part three uh in our series of dealing with this yesterday i shared some thoughts with you on how to study uh management accounting and pass management accounting once and uh I think someone, George Ampofo, also brought up a question relating to how to pass financial management, and I shared my thoughts on that one as well. So today I'm going to be touching on financial reporting, how you're going to be studying or how you should study financial reporting and pass the exams once and for all and uh, other subjects as well with your questions. So when you join the stream, you are welcome. Comment in the chat box any questions you have for me. Give us a thumbs up on the video. It helps us a lot to be able to reach students across the country and across the globe at large. So let me share my screen with you and then let's get into the discussion real quick. Let's get into the discussion real quick. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Coming up. Mm. Okay, so we up now. So like I mentioned yesterday, I shared some thoughts with you on how to study and pass uh, management accounting as well as the issue in relation to financial management. And uh, I think financial management was because of the question asked by George Ampofo yesterday on how to pass the financial management exams. On YouTube, I see Toby saying, good evening, sir. Good evening, Toby. I hope that you're doing well. Comment in the chat box any questions you have for me. What do you want me to uh, share my thoughts on? Let me know in that case. What do you, would you want us to cover in the channel? And uh, let's see what we can do in relation to that. On YouTube, John Malongo is saying uh, something. What is he saying? Say, can you repeat uh, in a few minutes, the presentation you did yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I was just answering questions that people were asking, and I shared uh, with the community how to study and pass financial management as well as management accounting. So you can watch the playback of that video to get a breakdown of those things. So it was question and answers. People asked questions and I was answering those questions for them, John. So that was what we did uh, yesterday in that case. That was what we did yesterday in that case. Okay, so how about financial reporting? How do you study financial reporting? How do you revise financial reporting? And how do you actually pass the financial reporting exam? So I'm going to be sharing my thoughts with you in that case. Okay, I see a question coming from Toby. Toby is saying, uh, say, need you to throw more light on life cycle. When you say life cycle, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean life cycle as in strategic case study, life cycle or life cycle costing? I don't know. Okay, if it is just about life cycle, probably clarify for me, Toby, in the chat uh, box. Let me know if you are referring to life cycle as in the stages products go through or life cycle costing in management accounting because the concepts are going to be different depending on where I am. Uh, looking at it from in that case.
Okay, so when it comes to life cycle, we mentioned that products, what am I writing, life cycle? When we talk about life cycle, products goes through uh, life cycle or cycles in the production of goods and service or throughout their lives. And in relation to that, Okay, Toby is saying life cycle costing. Okay, yeah. So let me let me stay with that because I wanted that clarity clarity to be able to know exactly what to do. So with life cycle costing, it has to do with where we uh, look at or determine the cost that uh, we incur uh, throughout the life of a particular product. Now, the reason why life cycle is important is because of the fact that it connects with what is called target costing. Now, target costing is simply, or a target cost is simply the cost that an entity expects to incur on a product in order for them to achieve a certain profit output. So when we talk about target cost, the target cost for a product is going to be the selling price of the product minus uh, the expected profit the entity wants to make the expected profit the entity wants to make. So when we deduct the expected profit from the selling price, we get a target cost. What it then means is that the target cost should be the cost of the products that we are going to be, uh, the cost for the product so that we can uh, get that target profit we want to make as an organization. But in, in order for us to understand the concept of target cost and also make various decisions as an organization, we have to find out, okay, when it comes to the product, the product is going to go through uh, various stages. So basically, depending on the school of thoughts that we are using, the stages of the products can uh, start from the introductory stage, uh, the growth stage, and then the decline stage. So this is gonna be R&D, okay, research and development. Then we come to the introductory stage. Then we come to the growth stage, come to the maturity stage, and then the decline stage. So what organizations try to do is to determine the cost that they are going to be incurring throughout the life of the product. So once we determine the life cycle cost, then the organization to some extent will now know the cost that they will actually be incurring. And almost always, there is going to be the difference between the target cost, that is the cost that the product should be uh, for us to make the expected profit and the life cycle cost. So there is going to be that gap between the life cycle cost is really the actual cost that we have to incur. Okay, the actual cost we need to incur. The expected or the target cost is the cost that we want to uh, use or we want to incur so that we can achieve a target profit. So with life cycle costing, what organization is trying to do is to identify the cost that they incur throughout the life of the product so that they can determine how they can put in place various measures to reduce the cost to an acceptably low level. So for instance, if the target cost, which is gonna be the same, uh, uh, which is always gonna be the case, is not the same as the life cycle cost, then we have to find a way to reduce the life cycle cost. And that is what we call the cost gap, okay? That's what we call the cost gap, where there is gonna be a difference between uh, the cost that we, expect to incur to achieve a target profit as compared with the cost that we are going to be incurring throughout the life of the product. So how do we close the gap? We close the gap by usually reducing the, co uh, the cost. So maybe the research and development stage, the organization can decide to uh, increase the design or the development of the product in such a manner that during the uh, decline stage, we, would have to, we don't have to incur a lot of cost on disposal in that case. So when we talk about life cycle costing, that is the idea. It is about identifying the cost that an entity incurs within or throughout the life of the product so that they find out how to reduce those costs in order to achieve a given profit for the organization. So Toby, uh, the concept of life cycle costing, that is what you need to understand in relation to that. Let me know if uh, that makes sense for you. I think life cycle costing is also one of the 
areas that uh, we recently don't have any topics on in, in, in that case. Um, we will see what we can do if we can uh, have some videos on that. But Toby, let me know if it makes sense for you. If there is something you don't understand too, you can make me clarify it much better for you in that case. Augustine A. Boatin. Now, I see some of you guys joining. Welcome. This is a Q&A session. So comment in the chat box any questions you have for me. Uh, whatever it is you want me to share my thoughts on, just put it in the chat box on YouTube. Put it in the comment section on Facebook. Whatever it is, just put it in the comment box. Let me share my thoughts on it uh, if it is possible for me to do that. And let me assist you in order for you to prepare well for your examination. Augustine A. Boatin. My best method was using to start was using to study or I was using to study and revise for exam was teaching other colleagues and by so doing I was able to pass most of the papers. It's funny though, but yes, that is very, very true. Learning as though you're gonna be teaching what you are learning. And uh, that is common. It's a it's a good strategy. You know, I spoke to you guys earlier or some time ago about the uh, teach technique. So yes, it, it's it's very true. It's very true. When you learn as though you're going to teach, it's going to increase your chances of uh, actually being able to understand the thing well, because number one, you don't want to disgrace yourself before your colleagues. And then number two, you also don't want to screw up yourself. So it position you in that curious uh, mentality or curious uh, manner so that you can really study well and understand what you're studying. Solomon Ajoko ish Solomon Yao. Let me pick that. What are the likely topics that come in exams for financial management? Oh, yesterday we spoke about financial management, Solomon. It's not about the likely topics. Every topic in financial management is going to be examined. So there's a question on business valuation waiting for you. There's a question on capital, cost of capital waiting for you. There's a question of sources of finance waiting for you. Long-term sources of finance, short-term sources of finance, uh, Islamic finance, all these things there. Working capital management, there's a question waiting for you on that. Investment appraisal, there's a question waiting for you on that. Risk management, there's a question waiting for you on that. So Solomon, it is not about the fact that which topic will mostly come. There is always going to be a question on each of these, and it depends on ha uh, having an understanding of the exams. That is where you will know in which topic exactly how would the question be structured. That is where our examination analysis documents comes in to really break down, to find out that, okay, when it comes to cost of capital, this is the structure of the question that the examiner is likely to bring up. But topic wise every topic it's going to be examinable or it's going to be examined in the exam hall all other things being equal any other questions put it in the chat box for me put it in the comment box for me real quick as i provide you with some strategies i see some of you joining us on facebook as well as on youtube you are welcome give us a thumbs up on the video and share the video let's reach many students watching the live stream and watching the playback it helps us a lot okay so toby said i'm good sir all right that is good steve bachi donko said um please say sir please concerning the ica question bank it seems there are errors please can you confirm because it makes me think i'm wrong or something when you see when you say it seems there are there are errors what do you mean then he says financial reporting in particular when you say it seems there are errors, what do you mean? It's then it makes me think I'm wrong or something. Maybe it's about presentation. Presentation could be different in the book, but if you're arriving at the same answer, then you shouldn't have a problem it's because it's about, pre pre okay, you say errors in figures. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, errors in figures are subject to, to it, it can happen. It could be a type error or something like that. So it could be, it could be something like that. Not, yeah, there could, there could be those things there though, but I, I have to look at that well before I make any comments on that. 
uh, in that case. So I have to look at that well. Unfortunately, I'm home today, so I don't have it here. What I have here is the advanced audit and assurance, advanced taxation and principles of taxation. I don't have the FR here, so I'll check it up for you. Uh, tomorrow, join me on the live stream. I'll look at it again and see. Uh, there are some minor things I've seen in the book, uh, minor presentation issues there, uh, which sometimes happens though, but uh, to really conclude that a lot of things are there, I haven't looked at it that much because I don't really uh, take a lot of questions or look at a couple, a lot of questions from the revised kids. Uh, I have a source of questions that I gather. So it makes me not really refer to it that much, even though we have it in the office. Timothy said, good evening. Oh, today I'm quite busy at work. I can't pay much attention. <laughs> Oops, okay. Steve said, I text you on uh, WhatsApp, okay. The question has a different figure and the answers are also different. Okay. Yeah. So like I said, it could be that that error happens because one of the things you must understand is that uh, some of these questions are, you know, copied questions and uh, they try to change the name, the currency and those things. So in literally translating some of these things, there could be errors and mistakes in some of these things, which I hope that the ICA will be likely to uh, maybe solve it as we move ahead with the publishers, as we move ahead. So what you're saying is true. There are a couple of issues like that there, but you must pay attention to the uh, principle once you know this is the right thing. Because if you see figures there and there are figures you don't even know where they got the figure from, it, it happens. It happens in publishing sometime if care is not taken and attention is not really given to what is going on. So that is it but i'll cross check again really to conclude if there are much of these things in that case um on facebook danny uncle said please i want to find out can i use the same thing i learned in corporate governance previously in part two to write strategic case study please no please no strategic case study it's a different world altogether from corporate strategy ethics and governance so it's a different strategy. It's a different world altogether. Uh, because if you are talking about what you learned in corporate governance, it means like a check. It's been a long time. And uh, yes, the things there are here. You, there are ethics, there is governance, there is the financial perspective here. But strategic case study is nothing. <laughs> corporate governance is nothing close to strategic case study. So what you learn in uh, corporate governance is just like a fundamental issues, but the real stuff is in case study. And please, the case study exam is also different from the corporate strategy exams. So you cannot just transfer just like that. You gotta be careful and approach strategic case study really different from how you approach corporate governance. But the things that were in the corporate governance, most of them, almost everything, it's in the strategic case study, but the approach to the strategic case study exams, the approach to the strategic case study learning and preparing for the exams, it's different ball game altogether. So Danny, what I would say is that you gotta be careful about how you implement that. Peterson said, hello boss, thank you for the service. Always a pleasure, always a pleasure. I see some of you guys joining, you are welcome. Comment in the comment section in, on Facebook, Comment in the chat box on YouTube for me. Any questions you have, what you want me to share my thoughts on for you real quick. Um, Hussein Shaba said, hello, Inshira. Please, can you give me tips regarding ACCA? Uh, can you give me tips regarding ACCA F9? That is financial management. Financial management in ACCA is just like what you see in the ICA. Uh, financial management because the scope of the <coughs> syllabus are going to be the same uh, in that case. Uh, we see business valuation in ACCA, corporate cost of capital there. Now, the, the strategy I gave yesterday about this is that you need to have a book and have a summary of every the principles underlining each of the topics. 
Okay, so uh, yesterday, yesterday I, I went through FM and the techniques you need to understand. So maybe Hussein, you can go to uh, my channel on YouTube since you're on Facebook, come to the channel on YouTube. And yesterday, the session I did part two of how to revise and pass your exams, you can look at the detailed strategy I gave on financial management and that can help you better to prepare well for the exams so that I don't have to uh, repeat a lot of the things I mentioned yesterday. But generally, it's about spending time going through the principles, understanding the basic concept well, then you understand the structure of the examination, then you can start solving questions. And once you do that, you will be able to be in a better position to pass the exams and become successful. Toby on YouTube said, Sir, I need clues to tackle, solve, interpret transfer pricing questions. I would like you to talk on the topic as a whole too. Yeah, transfer pricing, it's a, uh, it's a broad area in management accounting uh, that I would have to share my thoughts on or maybe take you through uh, as a whole thing on its own because um, that's a topic. That's a topic. I cannot just talk about it straight up like that. It's, it's a whole session that we need to hold on that. So uh, maybe what I can do, Toby, it's uh, maybe we'll see if we can have a session on some of these things because it's under performance uh, measurement. And uh, we do currently don't have any video on transfer pricing on the channel, but our paid students for management accounting, they already have content about this on our channel, sorry, on our online portal. So what is going to happen is that... Um, the concept of transfer pricing is broad. Uh, and uh, what I would say is you need to take into consideration a number of factors. But the idea about transfer pricing is simply the price at which one division transfer goods to another division within the organization, okay? Another division. So the internal price is the transfer pricing. But when we are making the transfer pricing decision, a lot of factors must be taken into consideration when making the transfer pricing decision, we have to consider whether the division making the transfer has a limited demand and unlimited resources or uh, unlimited resources and limited external demand. All of these things are factors that uh, have to be taken into consideration when actually selecting or determining the range, the possible range of transfer pricing. Then we also have to take into consideration from the perspective of the entity buying the goods, whether they have any outsourced firm or another firm from outside that can provide them with the same product at a much lower price. So we have to take into consideration the pers from the perspective of the division selling, whether they have unlimited external demand, limited external demand, limited resources, unlimited resources or capacity, then from the perspective of the buy-in, we have to uh, understand whether they have an alternative person or an alternative supplier who will sell them their goods. So all these are factors that have to be taken into consideration and the transfer price computation depends on these factors and vary under all these factors. So like I said, this is going to be a whole session that probably we need to uh, hold on that uh, as we move on in the discussion, possibly somewhere around next week in that case. Actually, if we get a lot of requests around uh, performance measurement in management accounting, then I could share my thoughts on that. I could, I could teach that for you in that case. On YouTube, Hussein said, thank you, sir. I will have a look at that video. All right, Hussein, all the best also in your exams. Ampofo said, sir, please, are you going to talk about how to go about preparing for FR? Yeah, definitely. Why wouldn't I talk, uh, talk about FR? So let's go to financial reporting really quick. So when it comes to financial reporting, how do you revise financial reporting and ultimately pass financial reporting uh, examination? Now, number one, it's you need to understand the structure of the exams. As always, you need to understand the structure of the exam. So when it comes to the financial reporting exams, the first thing is we're going to have the consolidated financial statement. The consolidated financial statement. Then question two, depending on how excited the examiner is, we're going to have a question on the accounting standards, IFRSs and IASs. Question three, we're going to have a question on the single entity financial statement. 
maybe question four we're going to have questions on the interpretation of financial statement please know that the question number could vary okay the question number could vary but these topics are going to be there question five is what i call the no man's land area we're going to have something on ethics we're going to have something on conceptual framework and regulatory framework And we're going to have another thing on also some standards again here. So this is the structure of the financial reporting exams. Let me say this, and I keep on saying this. If you are writing financial reporting exam, I forbid you from answering consolidated financial statement question first. Stay away from the console question. Now, one of the things I keep on telling you guys is that in the chief examiner's report, and I, like I tell you all the time, I refer to the chief examiner's report because the chief examiner knows students better than anybody else. Now, from the chief examiner's report, the chief examiner always says that, oh, students do well about the consolidated financial statement question. However, they fail the exams. However, they fail the exams. However, they fail the exams. Why is that? Because you see, that's a paraphrase, okay? Uh, but you see, what happens is that, what happens is that uh, with consolidated financial statement, it requires a lot of time. I don't care with all due respect, who teaches you consolidated financial statement, whether you learn from insurance premium or whatever it is, don't answer the consolidated financial statement question first. Don't do that, don't do that. So in that case, how then do you structure your revision and how do you approach it in the exam hall? In the exam hall, what I would want you to do is to number one, go for the uh, question five, the theories. Answer that first, the question on the ethics. Answer that first, conceptual framework. Answer that, those are gonna be theory questions. You can write those out as fast as possible. Then you come to the ratios. It depends on wherever you are learning at. If ratios, you are taught how to interpret ratios very well. It's a cool area you can do as fast as possible. Now, on my channel, there is a video on the YouTube channel on the interpretation of financial statement. I think around last year, I did a two-part video on interpretation of financial statement. You can check that video out to learn how to interpret financial statement. If you are strong in ratios, you can go there, take that 15 marks. Then, remember that at the foundation of financial reporting is the ratio, sorry, is the accounting standards. So, the Question on accounting standard and the single entity, every footnote you pick in the single entity financial statement is actually an accounting standard. So what I want you to do is this, as you are learning your financial reporting, you need to pay attention to the international financial reporting standard. Spend time to learn all the standards. Now I know somebody was saying, Shira, hmm, the standard is plain to you, which one do I learn? You've got to learn all of them and understand the basic principles that governs all of the standards. One of the standards that students have challenge with is IFRS 9 financial instruments. In my opinion, this is one of the simplest accounting standards that you can have. IFRS 9 financial instruments is one of the simplest accounting standards, but students have challenge about it. Why is that a sim that is, why is that one of the simplest accounting standards that you can have in my opinion in my opinion why is that because you see when it comes to financial instruments it's divided into two categories we have the financial assets for FA we have financial liability for FL or equity how do I know that it's a financial asset I'm dealing with when you hear that a company bought shares or the company bought debenture loan notes then it's a financial asset when i hear the company issue a loan note the company issue a convertible loan note then i'm dealing with financial liability or equity now how do we know that this financial uh, uh, instrument is an a liability of equity does the entity has an obligation to repay and there are principles governing how financial instruments are supposed to be dealt with so when you pick ifrs 9 sit down i have videos on my channel on ifrs 9 financial instruments watch these videos and write out the basic principles that underline the standards and do that for all of the standards 
I know you're going to say, Inshira, where the heck will I get time from? Oh, okay. You don't have time? Then you cannot pass the exams. So you've got to discipline yourself, make time available, and understand the basic principles underlining each of the standards. Because you see, many people say, eh, oh, FRD, if you want to pass, you need to solve a lot of questions. Please don't screw yourself up. You can solve 100 questions and still go to the exam hall and fail. Because it is not about how many questions you solve, it's about the principle you need to understand. It's about principle you need to understand. Just an, an, an aside, like with my students, uh, with my financial reporting students, uh, we've done financial instruments in class. We've solved questions with financial instruments and our revision has started already. And for three meetings, three consecutive meetings, we were doing single entity financial statements and each of the single entity financial statements we're having, there was financial instrument questions and we solve it. I mentioned the principle, I repeated it. I mentioned the principle, I, I, I admitted, I did it. Now they did a performance evaluation test that is last week, Friday, and like almost everybody still screwing up, like dealing with issue cost or transaction cost. When you're dealing with financial liability, transaction cost has to be deducted. But it looks like still people are adding the transaction cost to the proceeds before they can calculate the finance cost using both the coupon rate and the effective rate to arrive at the uh, carrying amount or the carry forward of the financial instrument or of the uh, uh, financial instrument. Yeah, I could say that of the financial instrument. So that is the thing. You need to spend time to understand the basic principles, George. Spend time, go through the standards one after the other, prepare a summary note. It got to take discipline. It got to take sacrifice. It got to take a lot of work, a lot of effort, but spend time. Now, that is the first thing. Because you see, if you understand the standards very well, there is a 20 mark question on the standard. The single entity financial statement is also 20 marks. How many marks am I getting? 40 on the standard. So actually, your financial reporting standards will position you for 40 marks. So if you are weak in the standards, you're going to fail the exams. So to pass financial reporting examination, spend time with the standards. And remember, if the examiner is excited, you will also have another standard question like three or five mark standard question in the question five, which means you are likely to get about 25 mark question on the standards plus the single entity 20 marks. That means you are going to have what? 45 marks question. So George, how do you learn financial reporting? Number one, understand the structure of the examination. Number two, Financial reporting standards or international financial reporting standards, the accounting standards are the basic, the foundation of FR. Spend time, have a diary, have a notebook in which you write out all the basic principles. When you finish with understanding the basic principles, then you can start solving questions. Then you can start solving questions. Then as you solve more questions, various aspects of the principle that you understand will be popping up so that you identify, okay, when, when the question state says this, this is what you do. Okay, what is the rule governing convertible loan notes? What is the rule governing leases of assets? What is the rule governing uh, investment property when there is transfer from owner occupied to uh, an investment property or when there's an investment property transfer to uh, a PPE owner occupied? What is the fundamental principles? What is the What are the basic principles underlining the standards? I believe that if you are strong in the standards, potentially that is 45 marks, all other things being equal. Add your ratios to it, five, making 60. Then ethics and the conceptual framework, 15, making 80. So before you start with console, and please, in the exam or don't be hurry, because one of the things we see, uh, one of the things I see students do, uh, like, I, I, or I, I see them do because they tell me, I, I don't mark, uh, I'm not an examiner. So I see students do is, they tell, because they tell me is, they put the pro forma down for consolidated financial statement and they try to write certain things down. Don't worry yourself with that. If you are strong in your standards, do your ratios, do your uh, ethics and conceptual framework, 
do your uh, single entity questing, the consolidated financial statement, just do the workings. Don't worry yourself to go and extract any financial statement. Don't worry yourself. Just do the workings. Get your group structure right. Get your net assets right. Calculate the goodwill if you have to calculate it. Just spend time to do your workings. Don't rush to extract any financial statement because the workings you do will score you masks, marks at the end of the day in relation to that. Because if you finish with all the workings and you don't even extract the financial statement, you are going to get more than half of the allocated mark for the question. That is the thing about consolidated financial statement. So George, and by extension, everybody doing financial reporting, this is how I want you to approach the paper. Number one, understand the structure of the exams. Number two, spend time to understand the accounting standards and for accounting standards you don't have problem on that on the channel there are a lot of videos of that on the channel and if you happen to be my students also then on our study portal we have lecture videos on that and we are holding various sessions on accounting standards solving questions addressing issues for you so you can understand it very well because i know it's challenging but that is how you pass the financial reporting examination so judge ampofo that is what i would say for you spend time to understand the principles under the interpretation of financial statements spend time to understand the principles concerning uh the accounting standards number two spend time to also understand how to answer ethic ethic questions in the financial reporting exams and then definitely solve a lot of questions to really understand how the uh principles apply at the end of the day. I believe that if you do these, you should be in a better position to be able to pass the financial reporting exams at the end of the day. So George Ampofo, let me know in the chat box if uh, that was valuable for you. And then if you have any follow-up question also, you could bring it up in that case. So if there are any questions, I see some of you guys joining. If there are any questions, you can bring them up real quick as I answer them for you okay on facebook hussein is saying inshira i also have a big problem in tackling theory questions since the acca financial management is almost 50 percent theory how can i ensure i cover theory effectively it was if it was covered in the previous video then it is okay i will watch that okay so hussein uh, i don't think i covered that well uh i spoke about that well uh in that case let me share some thought on that real quick. Now, I know that some people and uh, are not naturally good readers, okay? And uh, when I hear people saying that, oh, Inshira, I find reading subjects difficult, I, I kind of say, no, it's because you're lazy, okay? It's because you're lazy, that's all. There is nothing like somebody enjoys reading naturally and somebody doesn't like reading it's in your mind so what how are you going to position yourself so that you get right the reading subject what i want you to do is to approach the subject with a purpose right so let's deal with the abstinence why do you want to write this paper in the first place why do you have to pass this paper in the first place so you need to have the right man mindset of the bed okay if there are a lot of theories how can i learn the theories and understand them which means that you need to keep notes summary notes now you need to find out how you can keep your summary notes maybe you can uh, keep it on flashcards you can have a small diary that you work with or if you are like me then you have an ipad then you have those summary notes coming inside or better still you could record yourself. If you have it, you find it difficult for reading subjects, record yourself as you are reading and you read it out loud, you record yourself, then you'll be listening to it over and over again. Because there is nothing like, oh, Inshira, I am naturally not good at reading. No, you, you're just lazy and you're not finding the strategy or the approach. Because you see, the most successful person is in the world it's a good reader, somebody who reads, somebody who reads faster in relation to that. And so you need to find out, why do I have to pass this exam? Be motivated on that and find out how you need to study. So with the theories, put down summary notes. 
put down summary notes. So when it comes to sources of finance, what do I have to know? I need to know about short-term sources of finance, long-term sources of finance, Islamic finance. So put down summary notes. So when it comes to Islamic finance, we have something like Muduraba. What is Muduraba? Murabaha. What is Murabaha? We have Ijara. What is Ijara? We have Shakuk. What is Shakuk? So put summary, short, short definition of these things down and keep on memorizing them. Find out which study style work best for you. Some people, like I said, it's about recording and listening to it over and over again, which works a lot from people for people. Sometimes it's about images or pictures. So that is why some people, they will have a board in their study room and then they will be writing. When they finish reading, they try to write it on the board. Some people, that is how it works. So Hussein, find out which strategy works best for you. But it goes back to the purpose. Because you see, if you know that passing these exams will help you to take your life to the next level, will help you to become more successful, will help you to be able to uh, really achieve a goal that you want to achieve, then you cannot have any excuse, but find a way to make sure that you pass the exam. So that is a good question you brought up there. What I would say is find your why, and after you find your why, that is the mindset. Because most of the time, we, we just talk about the strategy, but it's not a strategy, it's the mindset. If your mindset is not good, no matter the strategy you use, you will lose. If you think FM is difficult, you will go and fail the exams. If you think FR is difficult, you will go and fail the exams. If you think, oh, ICA or ACCA is difficult, you will fail the exams and you will keep on failing. And you go and do your master's and come back. You will still go and fail the exams and you will give up in your life and you go and do something else. Maybe you go and sell kinky or something like that or go and do something like that and forfeit your dream. But it is the mindset. Why do I need to do this? If I need to do this because it, my life depends on it, then how can I make it happen? Put the summary notes down. Find out, is it recording that will help me? Is it uh, using mnemonics, uh, mnemo, uh, mnemonics that will help me? Is it using pictures that will help me? Is it reading and rewriting that will help me? Find out a strategy that works best for you. But nine out of 10, the summary notes thing really works best. So as you are reading, Put your summary notes down as you are reading put your summary notes down and that helps you and it helps you to engage the thing and put them in your own words try as much as possible to put them in your own words taking into consideration the salient points once you do that you personalize what you are reading and then try to also apply what you are reading with what you know previously and how they connect with other subjects once you are doing that it helps you to retain the information now, if you are doing financial management, uh, maybe you will do advanced financial management in at the final level. So that means that you don't just need the uh, knowledge for the for this paper to pass, but you need it in the level three. So if you think about that in the connection, that means you need to retain everything you study. So that increases your attention level. That makes your brain understand that this information you are learning is vital, is critical, and that helps you to retain more of the information so that you can apply it later on when the need arises. So Hussein, that is what I would say about uh, how you study the theory areas Ask yourself why you started this journey in the first place. Deal with the mindset, because if you can clear the mindset up very well, then the strategy will become successful in that case. So Hussein, that is what I would say uh, in that. Let me know in the, in the comment box on Facebook, since you're on Facebook, let me know if that was uh, valuable for you and that was what you were expecting. And I see some of you guys joining uh, this is a Q&A session. Put in the chat box what you want me to share my thoughts on real quick. Mustafa Tunkara said, hi, watching from watching you live from Sierra Leone. Okay, thank you for joining us. George Ampofo said, that was really valuable, sir. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, George. Eric Boabin said, good evening, sir. Good evening, Eric. I hope you're doing well, Eric Boabin. So that is what you need to understand um, about that. So I've shared my thought with you on uh, financial reporting. Then um, I've shared my thought with you on management accounting. <coughs> I've shared my thought. <coughs> Sorry. Then I've shared my thought with you also on um, financial management. 
in relation to that. Now, if you have any questions, please put it in the comment section on, on Facebook, then on the in the chat box on YouTube, and uh, I will answer your questions for you real quick as we continue with the discussion, as we continue with the discussion. Now, how about public sector accounting and finance? Public sector accounting and finance. How do you learn public sector accounting and finance and most importantly, pass the public sector accounting and finance examination? This is very, very critical uh, in relation to that. This is very, very critical. So when it comes to public sector accounting and finance, it's, it's also hugely a reading aspect but you need to understand how you need to approach the exams and approach the paper in that case. Number one is to understand the structure of the exams for the financial reports for the public sector accounting and finance exams. In the exam hall, question one is likely to be on final accounts. So you're gonna be preparing financial statements either for the central government that is on the consolidated fund or for a local assembly, or maybe for other uh, spending units in that case. So whether I like it or not, there's a 20 mark question waiting for you. Let me state this here. In your public sector accounting exam hall, you have to stay away from question one. Please stay away from question one in the beginning let that be your last or last but one question in the exam hall why is that because the question one is going to require a lot of time for you to finish it then we're going to have another question on budgeting so apart from question one we have 10 more question on um public procurement We'll have a question on public-private partnership arrangement. We have a question on evaluation of financial performance. Another done deal area, evaluation of financial performance. Note that the evaluation of financial performance can be in three categories. It, it can be either we are using the budget variance analysis or you are using the ratios or you are using the common size financial statement. So there are three things there. Each of them can be asked by the examiner in, in, in that case, but there's gonna be a question on evaluation of financial statements. Then we're gonna have questions on roles of key public officers. Roles of key public officers. Usually what I've seen the examiner doing is that question one usually has not been on final account. Sometimes uh, that has been on IPSAS and uh, conceptual framework. So if you go to the exam hall, you just have to read well because sometimes the question arrangement is not fixed, it's subject to change, okay? Because there, there is going to be a 20 mark question on uh, conceptual framework for general purpose financial statement. conceptual framework for general purpose financial statements, as well as something about the accounting under the accrual, using the accrual and cash basis. So there's a 20 mark seriously for this one. Usually per what we've seen the examiner doing recently, that's a 10 mark, 20 mark question coming in there. So conceptual framework for general purpose financial statements, and then the accounting using accrual basis and uh, cash basis. This is where the IPSAS come to town and we are talking about uh, the examiner giving you a transaction and asking you how it should be accounted for in the books of the company. And you are going to be using the IPSAS and there are a lot of IPSAS also there yesterday i think i introduced uh my students uh to that and it was really interesting as we will be starting to 
look at them in much detail as we continue with that. So yes, there is a question on final accounts. <clears throat> there's a question on public procurement. There's a question on public private partnership. There's a question on evaluation of financial statements. There's a question of role of key public officers like the Ministry of Finance, principal spending officer, principal um, accounts holder, um, the auditor general, parliament, like all of these guys, we're going to be having questions around them. Then we also going to be having some questions coming in uh, in relation to something about it in the Public Financial Management Act. So the examiner is going to always quote to the Public Financial Management Act in the exam hall for your PSA exams. And in the Public Financial Management Act, a lot of things can pop up from there. Uh, we can talk about the issue in relation to uh, budgeting, because there are some issues about budgeting coming in from there, the stages of budgeting, the processes of uh, budgeting, uh, and all those things could be popping up there in that case. Then uh, PIFA, Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability, the Public Expenditure and Financial Accountability uh, Framework. That is also another area. Uh, but the examiner is not too excited about that area. Last semester, he brought uh, questions about the key indicators and then uh, the purpose of the PIFA. Uh, probably this semester, he may not throw any job at you from that angle. But hey, it's an area you need to look out for. So you realize that with public sector, because of how broad it is and how voluminous it is, the examiner tries as much as possible to get to bring questions from each session. So you have five questions coming in, but you have like a lot of sub questions actually coming in in that case. So if this is the structure of the exams, I know procurement, something about procurement is going to be there. I know something about PPP is going to be there. I know there's going to be evaluation. So in the exam hall, what do you do? You want to make sure that you stay away from the final account question at the beginning of the exams. You want to make sure that you stay away also from the ratios at the beginning of the exams or the evaluation of financial statement. The reason is that the time required for these things are much, but the marks allocation is low. So what you need to do is that you go and write the theories like the procurement question, the PPP questions, the budgeting question, or the question one, which will be on the conceptual framework for general purpose financial statement and the accounting for accrual and the cash basis. These are going to be more theory areas and you can write them out fast so that you will save some time there <clears throat> to do the final accounts and the evaluation of financial statements. So that is the strategy, that is the approach about the structure of the exams and also how you position yourself uh, for the exams and what you do in the exam hall in that case. But how do you study the subjects? How do you study the subjects? In your revision, as you are preparing for the public sector examination, based on the structure of the exams, you need to again go back and start putting your summary notes down, very, very critical, at least half of offhead for minimum four rows of each of the uh, key public offices, at least four, have the points at the back of your mind. Now, I know someone will say, hmm, Shira, that is very difficult. How can I do that? Because uh, it's too much. No, there are a lot of information your mind can keep. So have a summary notes and put the summary notes down on all of these things. Spend time to understand the final accounts. Spend time to do the ratios, because ratios in public sector is a tough area. You calculate the ratios and the interpretation is also another thing. Now, there's a topic that I've forgotten here, revenue and expenditure management. There's also a question waiting for you on that in the exam or because that is one of the key topics as well uh, in the exam. So you want to make sure that the way you increase your chances of passing the public sector exams is number one, go through the syllables, go through the notes and have a summary note of everything. So when you take public uh, procurement, public procurement, what are the key things I need to pay attention to? Okay, I need to know the issue in relation to uh, the role of the public procurement authority. What is a tender, a public uh, procurement entity or procurement entity, the tender committee, the tender evaluation panel, the tender review uh, board. I need to know the functions about all of these things. Then what are the methods of procurement? The single 
source, the competitive tendering, and how the breakdown works. Then what are the stages involved in procurement in general? Then how about procurement of consultancies? So have a summary note. I know it's going to be tough again, but again, hey, if you're lazy, you cannot pass the exams. You want to pass this exam? You've got to be serious. You've got to dedicate some time. You've got to really sacrifice and put in the work, put in the effort. I know it's going to require a lot of time. It's going to require a lot of discipline. I know you're going to say, insurer, I don't have the time available. I close from work late. By the time I get home, I am tired and I have to sleep and come back again. But you need to pass the exams. So you cannot screw this up. So you want to sit down, prepare summary notes for everything that you are learning. And that is going to be a job breaker for you in the exam hall, and it will help you a lot. So that is how you revise. So after you are able to now prepare those summary notes together, discipline yourself, prepare it. Again, because it's a reading subject, you could record yourself and be listening to yourself over and over again or if you happen to attend lectures where you can record your you can record the lectures as the uh, uh, lecturer is speaking then you can record lect re you can record the lectures subject to the fact that the lecturer doesn't digress a lot to co to talk about a lot of things that doesn't really pertain to what you are learning then you could do that as well and that could help you so listening to yourself over and over again, going over the things, reading and rewriting it, reading as though you are going to teach somebody. All of these are minor strategies that will position you in order for you to prepare well for the public sector examination and most importantly, pass the public sector exams. Once you understand this, then you can go to the ICA question kits and then you start looking at some questions in there to help you to understand again the structure of the exams and the possible questions that the examiner can bring up in relation to that so public sector accounting and finance that is the thought I'm going to be sharing with you with that with that I see a question or a comment coming in from Frederick Kondo said Good evening, sir. I was going through the solution for November 2020 FR question one console, and I realized instead of taking the share capital for the parents in consolidation, they added some extra amounts. Okay, uh, Frederick, it's not that they added some extra amounts. I think there was a share exchange in the uh, question as part of the evaluation. So that is what you are seeing. Let me just cross check that. There was a share exchange. Yes. There was a share exchange which has not been recorded, I guess. Yes. So I have the script here. So let me just read through if it's something like that. So Kingdom Limited acquired 60% of the share capital of Paradise. The purchase consideration was settled by a share exchange. I get in it by a share exchange. So it says that none of the consideration has been recorded yet. So because the share exchange hasn't been recorded, now we will record it. That is why the share exchange, if you check here, the nominal value is one CD, but they did a share exchange and the share price of kingdom is three. So the amount you get for the share exchange will be split into share capital and then share premium so that the one Ghana CD multiplied by the number of the uh, shares that were issued will go to the share capital, then two Ghana CDs will be taken to the share premium. So Frederick Kondo, that is what you need to understand about why uh, they, they picked that. And I think I mentioned this to you guys. You see, again, this goes back to the principle. So it means that you don't understand the principles when it comes to consolidated financial statements. Are you getting it? So because and I've I've mentioned I've explained this. If you if you have not watched that, you can watch that on my channel. Uh, the video is available on the channel. You can check it out. The stages for consolidation. I mentioned this very well. That if the recording is not done, then we will record it so that in that case the share capital figure will go up because share capital will always take the parents on. But if the share exchange and it hasn't been recorded, like you see in this case, then we need to now record it in the financial statement. So Frederick, that is why you are seeing the figure being added. It's because of the issue of shares because the consideration was, uh, the acquisition was financed partly through 
a, a cash consideration as well as a share exchange. So the share exchange will be added to the share capital. So Frederick, let me know if that makes sense for you. That is the answer to your question. That is the answer to your question. So it is not just about picking the solution and trying to go over the solution. No, it's about understanding the principle. That is why I always tell students, solve the question before you go through the solution. Don't put the question on one side and look at the solution on the other side. That will not be effective. And you can only do that if you understand the principles well. Gideon Cranton on Facebook said, hi, hello sir. Please, have you already covered man accounting? If not, please help me with the tips and how to study for that paper, for the paper, thanks. Yes, I've already uh, covered management accounting. I did that yesterday. So you can go on, uh, you can check our uh, the live stream we did yesterday. It's on Facebook, but you can also check it on our YouTube channel and you watch it because I share in detail how you should uh, learn and pass the management accounting exam. So I've done that already yesterday. You can check yesterday's live stream, how to revise and pass the exams once part two. Yesterday was part two, so you can check out that video and uh, you'll be able to understand. Okay, so Frederick Kondo said, thank you, sir. You are welcome, Frederick. You are welcome, Frederick. So we have mentioned and spent some time to look at the various subjects on how we can revise for them. Man accounting, financial reporting, public sector accounting and finance, um, financial management. So these are the four papers that I've shared my thoughts on. So remaining corporate reporting, advanced audit and assurance, strategic case study, and then principles of taxation, that's AT, sorry, PT, principle of taxation and then AT, advanced taxation. So uh, these will be an other ones that I'm, I might have to uh, share my thoughts on with you uh, tomorrow, God willing, because of time constraints, I'll be concluding with my session today here and God willing tomorrow, I will all come again your way to share some thought with you on how you can study corporate reporting, principles of taxation. But throughout that, I will also be uh, taking uh, your questions. So if there are any questions you have tomorrow, you can bring them on the live stream as well so that I answer the questions for you and provide you with some strategies on how to prepare for strategic case study, advanced audit and assurance, corporate reporting, principles of taxation, as well as advanced taxation in that case. So that is what you need to understand. Thank you very much for joining us on the live stream. It's always a pleasure coming your, uh, your way. Make sure that you stay connected by subscribing to the channel and click the bell notification icon. That way, when I go live, you'll be the first person to be notified by YouTube so that you can join me on the live stream with your questions. So I provide you with the blueprints that you need in order for you to pass the examination. And most importantly, uh, become successful and take your life to the next level. So that's very important. Make sure you put in the work, you put in the efforts. Remember, excuses are for losers. So don't give yourself any excuses. Don't tell yourself my work, my job, my company, my wife, my children, and all of those things. It breaks my heart when I hear some of those uh, lazy excuses. Just put in the work, put in the sacrifice, and make sure that you do whatever you have to do legitimately so that you go in there and pass the exams. But the surprising thing is this, that the exams that you are going to write, many students will fail. Statistically, many students will fail. You want to make sure that you are not part of the statistics, you are not part of the people who fail the exams, but you are part of the people who will pass the exams in the May 2021 examination. And the only way you can do that is if you put in the work, you put in the sacrifice and follow the guidelines that have been given to you in order for you to become successful. So you take care of yourself and I'll catch you again same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. as we continue with our discussion. Stay safe and stay blessed. Bye-bye.